The US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said her country will not accept Chinese imports that would decimate certain industries, such as electric vehicles and batteries. Yellen's just finished meetings in Beijing, pressing the case for China to rein in excess industrial capacity. Speaking to our US partner, CNBC, uh, Secretary Yellen said she understood the reliance on certain Chinese imports. Being overly dependent on any single country for a very important good that's used in your economy can lead to a dangerous um, fragility in supply chains. And in the case of some of these clean energy goods, um, electric batteries, the minerals that go into them, um, solar panels, we have been very, very heavily uh, dependent on China. And that's another reason that we and other countries want to have some domestic capacity ourselves. You mentioned other countries, but China has been flooding Europe, for instance, with cheaper EVs. Can, can you blame Europe, which doesn't have as much growth right now as the U.S., for having closer trade ties with China? Well, I mean, uh, Europe and China do have close trade ties. Uh, Europe benefits from exports to China. But on the other hand, the car industry is very important in countries like Germany. Uh, Europe doesn't um, want to see these industries destroyed. They're an important source of jobs and um, very valuable ones with good So trade. should they increase protections to prevent all of these EVs from flooding their market? They, they have started an investigation of whether or not there's dumping of um, electric vehicles by China in their markets. And, you know, many countries um, have ways of um, investigating dumping, preventing it by putting tariffs in place. And that's something that WTO rules permit. We have tariffs. We haven't seen Chinese EVs in the U.S. Should they be allowed to sell their EVs in the United States? I mean, they are allowed to sell their EVs in the United States. We don't have rules against it. Um, I, again, in that area as well, we're trying to foster a domestic industry. We're certainly open to imports, including those um, from China. There are no rule against China selling uh, EVs in the United States. But we have higher tariffs than on them than Europe. We, we, do, we do have tariff, tariffs on them, I believe. Um, but, you know, this is for us an important industry. Well, I'm delighted to say that CNBC's Sarah Eisen, who did that interview uh, with Janet Yellen, joins us now live from Beijing. Sarah, great to see you as, uh, as always. I mean, clearly a message there perhaps of a, a little bit more leeway for Europe uh, to, to deepen trade ties with China. But I'm also fascinated in your take on where the US-China relationship is now, because for, for a number of years it seemed incredibly tense. The headlines coming out of this trip from Janet Yellen might suggest otherwise. Wilfred, it's great to see you. And yes, I am here at the U.S. ambassador's residence in Beijing, where Secretary Yellen gave a news conference in which she said that the relationship between the U.S. and China is undeniably better right now than it was a year ago. And she said that President Biden has given her directions and others to make it that way, to open the lines of communication on economics. And that's really what this trip was about. She came with a tough message. She confronted them on this overcapacity issue. And certainly that is critical of the subsidies that China has made to industries like electric vehicles and solar panels. She was tough as well on warning about consequences if China were, able, were to aid Russia with military activities and its industrial complex, but she did it in a way where she focused on the economics. And the economic relationship, Wilford, is in a better place, in part because of her. She's well-respected as a renowned economist. And a lot of these meetings she took with senior leadership at China and even university students at Peking University, which she did here, they just wanted to know her take on the economy. So her delivering that message of overcapacity, I think, was taken in a more respected way. However, I will say, Wilford, there were no breakthroughs. And so trust doesn't run too deep in this relationship. And on matters of national security, 
there are still many contentious issues. Russia, obviously, at the very top of the list. TikTok was mentioned in the discussions as well. There's a bill going through Congress right now that would ban or force a sale of TikTok. The Chinese are concerned about that. And even some of the Chinese commentaries and editorials and coverage during her meeting have been critical of the U.S. complaints of overcapacity. The Xinhua News, the state media commentary, called it sinophobic. So unclear whether anything actually gets done. But there were discussions. And I have to say, Wilfred, all the meetings that she had ran later than expected, which is always a good sign. Well, it depends what the tone was inside those rooms, I guess. But, uh, but I get your point. And, and you mentioned there <laughs> how she's respected in China. How is she respected back in, in the US? Because uh, here in Europe, I mean, clearly the US economic performance in recent years has been far stronger. People question a lot uh, Biden's age and, and I guess his capability. Is it important that Yellen is seen as her treasury, uh, his treasury secretary if they win for another four years? Is she expected to do another four years? It's not clear whether she would do another four years. She is 77 years old. But I will say she is respected. And in part, it's because of who she is. She formally led the Federal Reserve. She has been one of the foremost economists around the globe. And even as a politician now, and tre as Treasury Secretary, you'll remember in the last year or two, as the Federal Reserve and other central banks in Europe as well were raising interest rates, the worry was recession. The worry is these higher interest rates are going to squash the economy. And most of the economists were expecting a recession. It hasn't happened. And she was the one out front saying, I just don't see it. We're going to have what's called a soft landing, which is we're going to come out of this stronger because of policies, she says, that were put in place by the Biden administration that did include a lot of fiscal spending, the Infrastructure Act the CHIPS Act, where they're going to help subsidize chip production in the United States. So she's got credibility on that front. We just had a report out of the U.S. that three, more than 300,000 jobs were added, a lot more than expected during the month of March, and that the unemployment rate has been below 4 percent for more than 25 months now. So that does give her some credibility. However, inflation is still a problem. People are feeling it. The, mm -hmm. the U.S situation is very polarized in terms of politics, so there's no escaping that. She has been sort of this interesting, uncontroversial force, and I think that relates to the, the visit in China as well, Wilfred. You haven't heard any of the sort of demonizing political harsh rhetoric that we get from politicians on both sides of the aisle in the United States. With her, she really does stick to the economics, and it helps here in China, and I think it helps her her opinion of her on Capitol Hill and in Main Street America.